Hello everyone, this is Hoda Ganji. In this video, I'm going to talk about vertical surface design in Grasshopper and Lunchbox. So we're going to design a set of shelves such as this one. If I go to four viewports, uh, this is the front elevation. And you see actually the amount of thickness or extrusion is different uh, for each of them. So if you look at it from different angles, you're going to see that uh, they're a little bit back and forth, they have different amount of extrusion. So let's see how we can do this. Uh, this is the area that we're going to consider for the shelf area. I'm going to draw a surface here. It's going to be a vertical surface going from this corner to this corner and maybe it's going to be like 3 meters. So I'm going to type 3 and hit space. I'm going to actually take this to my shelf layer. Here I have a shelf layer. Within this surface we want to design a set of shelves. I'm going to go to Grasshopper. First I want to read that surface in Grasshopper. So I want to go to surface from here. Set this surface. Set one surface. And you can also embed it if you want internalize the data. I can also hide the surface as I already see that in Grasshopper. Uh, notice that this is different than the wall because this is going to be the wall. You can extrude it by like maybe 3 meters, solid yes, 3 meters. Um, we already have that wall. The reason I draw a different surface is that uh, this is only the base for designing the shelf. Now I actually want to use lunchbox. I want to go here. I'm interested to use the hexagon cells. I'm going to bring this here, connect surface to surface, and it already created some hexagons for us. So you can also change the U and V values here. And T at the bottom is also a parameter to transform the hexagon angle. Right. If you want to consider these as shelves, that line uh, needs to be at the bottom so we have a horizontal surface to put this stuff on top of it. You can actually rotate it here, but it would be easier if I just rotate the whole surface. So this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to draw another surface in the shelf layer. Let's go to surface, vertical. Instead of 6 by 3, I want this to be 3 by 6. So going from here over there and 6, enter. This is going to be our surface. Okay, I'll go back to Grasshopper. This time I want to assign this surface. So I'm going to set one surface. You can also internalize the data. Uh, you can also hide this surface. So I want to work on this surface and by the end I will rotate it so it's going to fit in that area. This part is going to be the horizontal bottom of the shelf. Uh, we can work with different values. You can assign a number slider. For instance, let's go with 12. It can go to like to U and V can stay as 10 or you can go with different values. Let's say you want to go with less shelves so these divisions need to be uh, a little bit less so maybe 10 by 8 11 by 8 that depends on the design and the size that you want to consider for the shelves i'm gonna go with this this seems good to me and uh, next we want to separate the edges so we're gonna use panel frame here how about before we continue, we make a group here. I'm going to type a scribble. And I want to say this is my hexagon panels. I can group these elements. Notice that the outputs are the cells, which are the curves and the center points. Next, I want to connect the cells to panels. So it's going to create panels out of that. If I hide the surface from here, see that it actually considered a panel. This is going to be the thickness of the material. So 
uh, this is now too thick. If I change the scale factor from 0.5 to like 0.9, it's going to decrease the thickness of the frame and now it's mainly panel. So this seems more reasonable. Next thing we're going to do is that we're going to extrude the frame. I can go with extrude. So frame goes to B for base. And the second item here is D or extrusion direction. Uh, in this file, the red axis here is my X. So it's going to be extruded in the X direction. I want to type X, assign it to this item. The amount of extrusion is one meter by default. So you can change it to like 0.5 or 0.6. This is going to be the thickness uh, of the shelf. You can assign it to F to the factor. And now the extrusion is 0.500, which means it's uh, 50 centimeters in the X direction. Uh, that's also because the units in my Rhino file is set to uh, meters with three decimal uh, places. That means any number I assign in Grasshopper is also going to be considered as meters. So 0.5 means uh, half a meter or 50 centimeters. So we're getting close. Another thing I want to do is that I want to actually make it a little bit more interesting by changing the amount of thickness so or amount of extrusion. I want to get rid of this factor and how about I just go with a group here as well. I'm going to type scribble and this is actually let's say my shelves. I can make a group here, create group. This all seems good. And next, in order to change that amount of extrusion, I'm going to go with an attractor point. So let's go to vector, go with a point. I'm going to consider this point as an attractor point. It's now located over there. Uh, how about I turn the preview off here and turn the preview off here. So we're only going to see the final product. OK. Now, here, uh, this point at this corner is going to be our attractor. And I want to get the distance between this point and all the center points. Actually, let me turn this on. These center points and this point. And based on that distance, I want to change the amount of extrusion of the shelves. So I'm going to go with the distance. This point is my attractor point. I want to get the distance between that point and the whole grid. If I put a panel here, you see that we actually have uh, 60 elements because that's the number of the shelves that we have. If I connect this distance to F, now the amount of extrusion is related actually to that distance so it's working but the values are too big so I wanna actually divide them by a number larger than one how about like 20 and the outcome of this division goes to factor now they are more reasonable and the amount of thickness is changing but actually I want to lower this number so the thickness is gonna be more Let's see, for instance, if I see it in this view, let's say I don't want them to be more than like 0.8 or 1 meter. So I need to increase this number. 8 seems reasonable, 8 or 9. It's about 75 centimeters here. So I'm going to go with this. Let's quickly check it. If I draw a line, you see at the bottom it says 0.75. So now the largest icon is 75 centimeters that seems good to me let's put it on perspective again you can also change the number of shelves by changing the u and v items here i want to group this and i want to type attractor point using a scribble This whole thing is also a group by itself. Uh, so the outcome seems good. I want to bake the final product. 
I'm going to put it in the shelf layer. I don't want to group it because I might uh, want to get rid of the number of them over there, play with it a little bit, so I won't group it. That looks good. Okay. Let's save this, close this, and the rest is going to be done uh, here. Uh, how about I turn off the walls for a second? Turn off the wall layer and maybe other layers as well. Shelf area, text, and door. Okay, uh, I want to select this. Uh, it's easier for the rotation to go to four viewports, uh, and here I want to go with rotation. Going from here to there and rotating by 90 degrees. So now it's going to look like this. It, it's good because the thinner part is at the top, the thicker part is at the bottom, but you can keep rotating this if you want a different arrangement. Uh, so I want to get the whole thing, turn on the shelf area, go here, and also I want to move them uh, to fit in the shelf area. Notice that my project is on, so it's going to move in XY plane, going from this corner, to this corner. Now it's exactly in the shelf area. So seems interesting. Uh, and now you can also play around with it. Let's say maybe you want to get rid of these ones at the bottom. So if you don't like them, you can just get rid of them or you can keep a couple of them, erase the other ones. Uh, you can do it for the rest of the panels. Let's say maybe I don't want that one at the top. Maybe I can also get rid of these three, so it's going to have an interesting effect here. Let's say on this side, maybe we don't want these two. Um, you can also get rid of some of the items at the middle, so maybe you can delete this one and this one. So it's an open space here, uh, or if you need more space somewhere, you can erase three of them. You can turn the wall layer on. We can grab this and go with extrude as a solid by 3 meters. Uh, actually, this needs to be in the wall layer. And now you see that this is how it works here. Let me turn on the other layers. Okay, so we have the workspaces over there and here we have the shelf.